Um, my name is Zoe, I'm um, Associate Director of the Freedom Theatre and I will be taking us through the various components of today's meeting. Um, predominantly we will be hearing from the team in Janine Camp who will be addressing many of the questions that Friends internationally have been asking over the last week. Um, we will then go through the steps on what people can do. The aim is to be no longer than an hour, but that might be a little ambitious. Um, so we might run over, but we will try not to. Um, I'm really aware that we've got really, really long term friends and allies in this space, um, as well as some people who might be completely um, new to the Freedom Theatre and um, the work that they do. Uh, so we will try and cater for everyone. Um, and what we are going to do, drop a lot of links as we go along. Um, and the first one will be um, the general link, which is where um, everything spoken about today is going to be collated. Um, so in some ways, that's the only one you need. Um, this event is an emergency meeting and has been planned in haste. Um, we might have digital challenges, internet challenges, um, or just some practical challenges along the way. So please bear with us. Um, Online meetings uh, on Palestine, as many of you know, often get trolled. Um, this might include offensive images or text in the chat. Um, we have a great team on standby who will be dealing with any of these issues if and when it happens. Um, finally, um, before I begin with um, the questions for the team, the Freedom Theatre was built as a way to provide an alternative narrative um, and create space to hear those in Janine camp who are at the forefront um, of Israel's occupation, apartheid, invasions, arrests and killings. However, it is not an easy job to have to immediately, repeatedly um, and publicly speak about the atrocities um, they have just experienced. Um, there has been no time to rest and process what has happened. And furthermore, often media is quite hostile and this only adds to the layers of um, attacks. Therefore, I want to acknowledge the toll this is taking on the team, the courage it takes to keep speaking out and the gratitude I have, um, and I'm sure many in the audience have, for um, uh, be being here today and talking us through what has happened. So, Tabassi, I'm going to start with you first. Um, Akbar Tabassi is the current Artistic Director of the Freedom Theatre. Um, and um, Tabassi, I think maybe the starting point is if you could give us um, a brief, if possible, I know that, that's a bit challenging, um, a, but a brief account of your experiences um, in the last week and, and, and what has happened um, with this invasion. To be honest, we were waiting uh, uh, for a long time uh, that the Israelis will invade the camp. That was uh, really expected because they were preparing for it for a long time. But we didn't expect this brutality uh, uh, in this time after the 2002. This invasion, it's really look like, and the same invasion in 2002. The difference is uh, today the Israelis uh, has more technology uh, to deal with the invasion. So it was a lot of drones, a lot of uh, big drones, a lot of small drones. Uh, the sky was filled of drones, watching, filming, bombing, shooting uh, everywhere. Uh, so for me, I lived the 2002 invasion. And for me, there is no difference. That was 10 days and it destroyed the camp. And this time it was uh, 48 hours somehow. And they, in a way, destroyed the camp. Uh, to be honest, this invasion was a bit difficult for me. You know, uh, before in the in the second uh, of July, third of July, in the night at one o'clock, we heard a big explosion in the middle of the camp. The people run to the middle of the camp and they find one of the houses where some guys were staying there, uh, uh, being bombed or rocketed. And this didn't happen at least from 20 years. Is the first time the Israelis using rockets to to bomb the houses uh, uh, in the Palestinian territories. So they bombed this house 
uh, a minutes later, they bombed another two houses uh, and everybody was in panic, in shock. Uh, uh, the, the level of the attack, it wasn't uh, expected at all. So even the fighters, the people were really don't know what is going on. And after that, the Israeli uh, uh, groups, soldiers groups start to come close, surrounded, uh, surrounding the camp from uh, all sides. And then uh, at five o'clock in the morning, the bulldozers start to come uh, into uh, the camp and they start to bulldozing the streets, bulldozing everything comes in their faces. And it was, uh, you know, the bulldozer called D9, which is the uh, like the special uh, bulldozer uh, for this kind of, of action. Uh, so uh, I watched all this neighborhood because I live exactly front of the Freedom Theater. All the houses was filled with soldiers, snipers everywhere, uh, uh, throwing sound bombs, smoke bombs everywhere. They start to move from house to house. They are scared uh, to move uh, in the middle of the streets. So the strategy was destroying the walls between the houses and moving from house to house, arrest people, put them in one room, take their uh, telephones and keep them in, in one locked room. They cannot even move for hours. Uh, they have a whole plan of many houses, many areas they need to bomb and destroy. The problem is this time, you don't see a lot of destructions from outside. In this invasion, the whole destructions is from inside. They have a new kind of bombs where you put it inside the house and it, it destroys the house from inside the wall, but doesn't make explosions outside. This is a new or another strategy. But for, uh, for the first day, it was the difficult, most difficult day that each second was like an hour. They were bombing, uh, rocketing, shooting in all directions, uh, th uh, uh, all the time. People uh, stuck in the houses, they could not check what is going on. We hear the army, we hear the vehicles, we hear the flights, but we couldn't even uh, uh, open a window, open a door to see what, well, what was going on. We had this feeling that uh, maybe they will doze us, they will uh, uh, bomb us, they will storm inside. Uh, so it was really difficult time, and when the night come, um, it, it was like really, uh, how I call it, a horror movie that people could not take it anymore. You know, it's a very difficult while you're staying in one room, you hear all of these sounds, and you know, the camp, it's one kilometer square. Any, any rocket or any bomb, the whole camp will be uh, uh, shaking. Uh, so in my family, I had two young daughters for my brother and my old parents, and it was really difficult. No food, no electricity, uh, no internet. You cannot connect anyone. You cannot ask anyone. You don't know what is going on. And just a, a feeling of a fear that you're gonna die while you're waiting, something gonna happen. So in the night, uh, they called our neighbors and they said, we're gonna bomb your house. Your house is suspected house. So for them, it was two plans. There is already, I wanted people, they would destroy their houses if they don't give up and uh, put themselves in the Israeli army hands. And other houses, it was like suspected houses that also the families in these houses got the message. They have to leave the houses because it's gonna be bombed or rocketed. So our neighbor had this message. So I, I my father, my family didn't want to go out. Even in all this situation, they were really like obsessed about we will not leave our houses, we will not do it again. And for my father, I really begged him to leave the house because the next house is gonna be bombed. And we are the only people in, the, in this neighborhood. If anything happened, no one will help. So I managed to convince him. And when we, uh, I saw the ambulance came to the, our neighborhood to take uh, one injured guy. So I took my family outside, but I saw the soldiers having a small checkpoint that any car, any young man from 15 and older uh, been arresting them. So I had to jump with an old man and another woman. I have to jump in ambulance. So they, I, I, they took me out of the camp with the ambulance. And I find out they were arresting many people just to show the Israeli community, to show the, 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 the opinion of the people in Israel 
that we're doing the operation, we're arresting people, we're arresting terrorists, we're destroying the houses. And that was another long night that thousands of soldiers being changed all the time. Uh, uh, you talk about 300 jeeps and vehicles was around and inside the camp. I promise you the Israeli army was shooting all the time, provoking the guys, provoking the fighters to come out to see where they are. But in the end, this operation was for nothing. Uh, the good thing, yes, we lost some people, uh, uh, young people around the camp, but the main target people or what they call it, uh, like we didn't have any uh, loss in the, in, the, in the people's lives. That was the good thing. All the damages was about the uh, houses, uh, electricity, water system, uh, uh, the, the, the streets, a lot of cars for people were being destroyed, fired in the camp, in the theater. It's another story. I think the people uh, uh, who was also in the theater, around the theater, my colleagues will explain about it, but also as a Freedom Theater, as an organization, artistic cultural organization, was not uh, uh, away from all what, what was going on. They don't have any consideration of a... Um, Tabassi, I think you've you've frozen, and um, I think what you what you've just moved into, we're going to come back to in a in a second. Um, I'm very aware that the, there might be some people here, as I said earlier, who are new to the Freedom Theatre um, and um, what's happened in Janine Refugee Camp, and therefore I will just drop a link um, in the chat so that you can just uh, have a quick read about the work of the Freedom Theatre um, and. Um, we um, will come back to what why this work is particularly important um, later on in the meeting. But yeah, if you if you're like if you've come in and you're not quite sure what's going on, then um, that that's where to follow to have a quick read. Um, Yasmin, are you here? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Brilliant. Um, yes, I'm just going to introduce um, what, what you're about to read. So um, next, we're going to hear a statement um, from Rania Awaswi, written on behalf of her fam family, which includes her sister, Suzanne. Uh, Rania oversees HR, general communications and admin logistics at the Freedom Theatre. And Suzanne is the visual creator, which includes photography, film and um, VR. Um, Rania and Suzanne are one, uh, two of the first people to ever join the team in 2005-06, um, and I think, as far as I'm aware, are the Freedom Theatre's uh, longest um, employees. Um, they have been at the forefront of what has happened in the last week um, and have chosen to write a statement, um, which um, Yasmin will, has kindly offered to read out. Over to you. Thank you, Zoe. Uh, hello. Um, first of all, I'm I'm here on behalf of uh, Rania, as uh, Zoe said before. Uh, and please uh, bear with my emotions. I read it so many times to try and uh, soothe it and try to uh, just say it as fluent as possible. But it's quite heavy. So bear with me, please. So <clears throat> this is Rania saying, I am Rania al Wasfi from Janine Refugee Camp, a mother of three children living in the Jibriyat area overlooking Janine Camp. Early Monday morning at one, large Israeli forces from the occupation army entered the outskirts of Janine Camp. Their largest concentration was next to my house. There was killing, shelling, demolishing, burning of houses and car, raising roads, loss of friends, family, and loved ones. I called my mother crying and asking her to leave with my family from the, from the camp because I'm afraid that she will die. She refused and my brothers refused to go out. They would prefer to die in the, their house than be displaced again. They would prefer not to surrender. I realized that I was losing them. I cried so hard that the tears dried up. My heart stopped in fear. The shelling began, the clashes began, then the invasion began, and I watched out the window as the troops 
of armed personnel. Enters the camp. <clears throat> Their number was innumerable. If these forces and equipment entered a country, I would expect they would occupy it. Such very, very large forces just to invade a camp, a kilometer square. I could have died from fear for my family. My camp, I adore my camp. I was born and lived my best days in this camp. At 10 a.m., my family's house was bombed by the occupation planes. Pieces of the missiles hit my brother and uncle, and they were taken to the hospital, but they were okay. At four o'clock in the afternoon, soldiers entered my family's house, detained them in a room, confiscated their mobile phones, and cut off communication with them. And since then, we did not hear any news about my sick mother, my sister, or my brother's wife, and her young children. In the evening, the army asked the camp with residents to leave the houses because they wanted to bomb the house is there. The planes left, but all the people were not allowed. The rest of the army has been in the house for two days and they refused to let my family out. They investigated my mother about the camp, their resistance, the camp's people and the neighbors. They had a large police dog with them and they put him next to my brother's children. They are now suffering from a nervous breakdown. My little nephew is just three years old for years. He has been suffering from trauma. Now he is experiencing a severe nervous breakdown due to the bombing of the house and the army siege. After the army withdrew from the house, the Palestinian Red Crescent came and brought my mother to the hospital with the family. She received some treatment and they are fine now, thank God. If they demolished the house, bombed every neighborhood and burned everything in the camp, we will not leave the camp here. We will remain like olive trees. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much um, for reading that. And again, I want to acknowledge the toll this is taking on the team, um, the courage to continue to speak out about what's happening and the gratitude that I have and I'm sure everyone has for um, being here today with us. Um, my next question is for Adnan Talkman. I, um, I think you're definitely with us. Um, Adnan is our head technician. Um, it also happens that he's part. Uh, the Freedom Theatre is sort of partly in his home, um, and this means that many of um, his kids, nieces, nephews, grew up um, in and around the theatre. Um, this includes Adnan's fourteen-year-old niece, Sadil, who was shot in the head and murdered just over two weeks ago. Um, Adnan was arrested on Monday and held for four days, um, and he is one of over 100 people arrested in Janine this week. It's Adnan's second arrest. Um, the first was after the murder of Giuliano Mercamis, our artistic director. Um, and um, I think it's just uh, important to also mention um, that 40% of Palestinian men um, are arrested and imprisoned. Um, and in Janine camp, that um, uh, statistic is a lot higher. Um, and so Adnan, what I, what I would like to ask you if you feel comfortable speaking about um, is um, to just talk us through um, your arrest. Uh, and I think more importantly, the psychological and, um, and physical effects these, these arrests and imprisonment have on, on people. Hi for everyone. Uh, I think the easiest one is my arrest here. It's for me. But what's happening during that? This is the question. When we are left our house and uh, we're looking for a safe place 
and we think in that time it's the only one is next to us. It's the Freedom Theater. So that I get with the family with the 25 persons, it's uh, with kids, with old people. And uh, here I thought in that time, this is the safe place because they are never get in it. And suddenly after the attack in the camp and the, all the people, they are start to go out and uh, I get into the theater with the kids. Uh, here I hear through the phone is still working in that time and the electricity through the social media i know they are occupied our house and they are making uh, building snipers there in our house it's next to us a few meters just only then uh, i says i hope the next is going to be easier because we are hiding here with the kids but the difficulty is coming soon the soldiers they are start to attack the other houses next to them it's by bombs or by big hammers. They start to destroy the houses and they are get in from one to one. And suddenly I hear a huge bomb. Uh, then the theater doors, it's open. It's like, and the glasses all over around the building, they are destroyed completely and they're broken. And with the 25 inside is kids, and we let them to sleep a few seconds and then suddenly the bomb is up, flowing up. And uh, here I don't know what can I do. I, we was waiting second to second for the next one is going to be to the theater. And you know, they are, uh, they are sending a bombs as a burning, not only bombs for killing or shooting or injured. This is what they are doing in the camp in general. And now it's, I says, it's our turn as the people who's in the theater. And here it's, uh, I start shouting because I speak Hebrew good. I start shouting over the soldiers. It's, there is a kids, there is a young man, uh, old man, and there is a, a woman, please don't shoot, please don't shoot. And no one listening and no one hearing, just we hearing shooting and shooting and shooting over the building. And I, with my brother, we have the idea only to call the ambulance to be in front of the theater to let us as a protection and after 10 minutes of suffering of shooting on all this issue the ambulance is coming and they are allowed to us to let us to be outside of the theater and in this moment we th i thought we are safe so that we are going back to our house and when i get into our house I find it like it's, they are broke everything. They are everything upside down. And we find a corner in the house and we hiding there. Then the soldiers is coming down and I start shouting in Hebrew. We are, there's a man and there's a woman there. Please don't shoot. Here the soldiers there comes in and they are cuff us, me and my son. And they are took us somewhere out of Jenin. Uh, investigations, then from the first step, the second step, and I find myself in one of the prisons, the Israel is jail in 1940, it's called Megiddo. And it's many investigation about what you are doing in the theater, why you hiding there, what you are doing. And they are investigating me as a terrorist, not as a, one of the, uh, the local people who's living here in the camp. And I find myself there, it's not only me there. I find a hundred people from the camp, young people, old men, uh, sick men with, uh, with uh, high pressure blood. This is what I start to feel. And some of them, they are get on the floor and they fell, fell down on the floor there because of their situation and the scaring what they are was living during this one and this invasion from the Israeli side as a scaring the this is the how they are arrest me and my son and then what's happening in the theater of burning the cars in the front of the theater and the bombs it's happened it's happened behind me this is what Tobasi was talking because he was in the opposite side where I was in the theater and this is the one he is the one can he was watching what's happened and what's going on out of the theater when I am inside. 
this is exactly what's happening here. And God of Um next up we have um Shana Lowe, who is a human rights lawyer in Palestine, um, working in advocacy and has worked for multiple human rights NGOs. Uh, she also uh, happened to come to Palestine the first time via the Freedom Theatre. I'm going to say in 2010, it might have been 2009, um, and she is just going to talk us through uh, some of the um, legal area uh, and uh, area of international law um, and, and some of the more uh, general context. Um, so Shana, over to you. So as um, Zoe mentioned, I'm just going to give a little bit of a brief overview of kind of the legal framework that should be applied to, to kind of give you the framing to think about uh, what types of violations um, occurred this past week. And, and obviously there will need to be investigations to, uh, that will last a long time into seeing kind of the specific intricacies. I'll also provide a little bit of the context around what's happening here in Palestine, particularly in the last six months, but also over the last few years. Um, so firstly, the most important thing to know about um, kind of the legal framing um, when thinking about what happened in Janine last week is that under international law and the laws of occupation, um, Israel was really only authorized to, to act as a law enforcement capability. The types of isolated um, and sporadic acts of violence that have been arising from Janine and other places in the occupied Palestinian territory or in the West Bank um have have um are, are do not rise to the level of hostilities so therefore kind of a more restrictive legal paradigm applies to israeli forces um and they really can only act as as law enforcement so imagine uh living in a big city and there's um what's considered some type of criminal activity and the police decide to go and and um and and address it through airstrikes I mean, that is a huge violation of international law. Um, it's disproportional. Basically, as a, as a law enforcement paradigm, Israeli forces are really restricted in the ability to use lethal force. They're only allowed to use lethal force um, when there is a threat of death or serious injury and when there aren't alternative forms of, um, of uh, ways to... to um, to, to um, avert that threat or stop that threat. So just thinking about that, you have Janine uh, refugee camp with um, somewhere around 12 to 15, 17, maybe even 20,000 people living in close quarters. It's impossible to distinguish um, when, when using airstrikes. Um, I just wanna, I know I only have a couple of minutes, so I just wanna move on and talk a little bit about what's been happening on the ground here in Palestine. This, of course, this escalation of Israeli violence and incursions in the West Bank predates um, Netanyahu's return to power about six months ago. But in the last six months, we've seen a real acceleration of trends that had already started um, that demonstrate that there's a real deterioration of conditions on the ground for Palestinians and a strangling of Palestinians in terms of the types of pressures that they're seeing. So just in the couple of days after um, the uh, incursion into Janine um, concluded The uh, Israel actually um, passed or passed the record that was set last year of the number of fatalities in the West Bank that have been tracked by the United Nations um, since 2005. So this year is already the deadliest year for Palestinians living in the occupied West Bank um, in the last 18 years. Um, we've also been seeing on the ground an increase in settler violence. Not only is the intensity of the settler violence increasing in terms of large scale pogroms targeting Palestinian communities, but also the presence and participation of Israeli forces in those attacks is increasing. And it's important to know that Israel as the occupying power is bound by international law to protect the Palestinian civilian population. Um, not to go in and attack them alongside Israeli armed Israeli civilians. Um, we've also seen an increase in the number of demolitions, including, of course, the tremendous amount of destruction that we witnessed in Janine this year, um, excluding what happened in Janine this week. We've already surpassed last year's figures in terms of the numbers of Palestinian property that's been destroyed or confiscated. 
um, and last year was the highest number that had been seen since 2016. So again, we're just seeing this increasing um, uh, violence coming both from Israeli forces, also from um, Israeli civilians. And we've seen that with these settler attacks that are happening throughout the West Bank, that they're often happening um, with the support of not only um, officials within the Israeli government, but ministers as well. The last thing that I'll say just to think about what's happening kind of broader in terms of Israel is that, you know, Netanyahu has been under, is currently under investigation and, and on trial for corruption. He has a lot of pressures coming from his coalition, members of his coalition, which is um, pushing for increasing violence to be used on, on Palestinians in the West Bank. And just this week, the Jerusalem Post reported on Friday that for the first time in three and a half months, Netanyahu had surpassed um, the opposition leader. If there were to be elections held today, Netanyahu would get the highest number of votes. And for three and a half months, he had been trailing behind Benny Gantz. So I think it's important also to think about the way that Palestinians um, and Palestinian lives are being used as pawns to um, for, for political um, purposes in order to um, one, manufacture a threat that does not exist um, and, and to really encourage people to rally around the flag and rally around the leader. Um, and we saw that this, with, this week with Netanyahu um, concluding the week um, more popular than he'd been in the last few months. So I think I'll leave it there in terms of kind of the analysis of what's happening here in Palestine. Um, and I'll, I'll send it back to you. Thank you, Zoe. So um, Mustafa began his relationship with the Freedom Theatre as a member of the board. Um, he was consequently arrested in 2015 and held in administrative detention for eight months. Consequently, he lost his job at the UN um, Office for Project Services, uh, but the UN's loss was the Freedom Theatre's gain and he is now our general manager and producer. Um, so, Mustafa, I, I've got a couple of questions for you. And the first one is, um, can you just talk us through the specific damage that's happened to the Freedom Theatre um, in terms of the um, building? Hello, everybody. Here's Suzanne with me here. Uh, hi, everybody. In fact, yet during the last two days, as what uh, my colleagues Ahmed and Adnan they mentioned for what's happened here in Jinn refugee camp, Really, we pass through the uh, really like it's big stress here. It's not just about about the human being, about what the Israel decide to to the, to do here in Geneva Fiji camp, about the attack, the impact, about the, uh, how they think about their uh, action and the military action and the aggressive action in Jenin. Uh, I try to make some testimony about what's happened here, and I wrote about that in different way in social media. And I try to reach for the uh, the people through uh, some small pieces in in my, in, in, in newspaper and uh, media agencies too. In fact, uh, you can't image what's happened here with the Freedom Theater in whole neighborhood when they attacked us uh, and attacked the building. They really occupied the building. They they, they changed the cut, the natural of the Freedom Theater to lead, to be like military base for their soldiers for for their jeeps. For all uh, the two days here, uh, they, beside all of that, I mean, uh, they tried to open, to broken the doors of the office and uh, they broke the glass and uh, they tried to enter to the stage itself. I mean, it was like really horrible. We talk about, you know, we are in building, it's a really old building. It's uh, built in during the British mandate in Palestine. And when they make their bombs, it's make a big effect uh, and impact of the building itself. We will, now we are in recovering uh, for all of, from Wednesday, in fact, until this moment, all the days we are just recovering. We talk about five cars already. That it was broken in the front of the Freedom Theater too for our neighbors. Uh, I mean, there is a lot of fires here. So when you heard in the first day about our, the first moment, you heard about there is a bombing that uh, target the Freedom Theater because all of that come from the people when they look for the big fire happened here in the neighborhood, in our neighborhood with the, because they are already make a fire in the, in the cars. And there is a lot of bombs in our uh, neighborhood. You can talk about 
we need really recovering, uh, we need to recover the freedom theater in building, in the, uh, in the our yard. It's not just for recovering for the building, it's like, it's, you know, it's this, this space in the freedom theater, in Geneva Fiji camp, it's considered like a safe space for the children and for uh, the young people. And when they attacked us, that means they really make all the people are, are worried about what's happened here with the Freedom Theater, what's happened with this kind of space already collective, the children, collect the children here, hug the children. With the, it's, all the time we talk about yard, whereas the people already can feel safe, feel good. They can just expression. And the, as usual, when the occupation attack you, it's make everything change. The natural of the issues it change, make it ugly, I mean, in all the mind. But what we can say, we can say through you, through the friends, through the, 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 our, uh, the colleagues, that our yes. teams, we will continue. We don't stop here. Sometimes this question come to us, at what time you can continue, at what time you can start with the work we, did, we directly said, we will start from tomorrow, from now. We will continue the work with the children. We'll continue the work with the, with the kids. We'll continue the work in the theater school. Yes, we have a lot of issue we need to recover, but we, are, we, are, we can continue because we believe in what we did and what we do, and we don't shine it. I, I think uh, there is some big initiative happened yesterday. Yesterday was like a re big ceremony in the Freedom Theater. All the people came from different areas to the Freedom Theater. Uh, the, uh, the artistic, independent artistic, with the cooperation with, in cooperation with the Freedom Theater, they make a big and important demonstration, artistic demonstration, but in, in, the, in, the, in the middle of Geneva Fiji Camp, they, with the children. Besides that, our colleagues from all the cultural organization in, in Palestine, they came to us yesterday, they stand with us, they put their hand with us to say, we you must continue. What now, we can say we open the space for, uh, we can say like uh, black, our platform, it will be open for all the artists in Palestine to come to Palestine and to stand with Jenin Refugee Camp, with the people in Jenin Refugee Camp, uh, in the face of this uh, collective punishment happened in the free, in Jenin Refugee Camp. Uh, you can't image, especially the people they came to Jenin Refugee Camp before the, uh, our friends. Now they are destroying all the trees in the, in the, around the, the, the Jenin Refugee Camp. The middle of Jenin Refugee Camp, it's really destroyed. It's like there is no streets, there is no electricity, there is no water. And we talk about that, it's not about just, just suffering or something. Really, we face like a really power, big power against the small area in, in, in intensive day, two days. It's like the scenario of what's happened in 2002, but in two days, you know, you, all, the, all the days, all the 14 days happened before, we, have, we face them in two days in this moment. So we have big damage here around us, all the people that are suffering, all the people that are a big impact, but we are, yes, because we have this dignity, we have uh, something we believe in it, we will continue and we will continue in the Freedom Theatre here. Um, thank you so much, Mustafa. So I just want to just double check and 100% clarify that the specific damage we're looking um, to the Freedom Theatre is that the outside yard, which is where a lot of people congregate, the children play, um, uh, the young people who attend the theatre often hang out with, has been um, very badly damaged. Um, that the ceiling of the Freedom Theatre, it's undetermined at this stage, but uh, there's quite large uh, cracks and we're not sure if that needs plastering or if that is going to be a, a major structural damage uh, and things like the guest house have also um, um, been damaged. Um, so as far as I understand that that, that is the the very specific physical damage to the building um, because um, lots of people have been asking and there has also been a rumor that the Freedom Theatre has been totally destroyed. It has not, it is still standing. Um, so um, I, I think that, that, that that's correct. Um, I want us to move on to what people can do in general. Um, so, um, First and foremost, because it's been a big question that that keeps coming up, is um, fundraising. Many people have reached out who are interesting in, interested in raising money, um, but also um, 
Uh, and as I, I said, there's a uh, potentially quite bad structural damage to the Freedom Theatre um, with the roof. Um, however, um, I think what is also really, really important to emphasize that this is not just about structural damage. Um, there is very, very long term um, psychological and tra traumatic um, effects. I imagine on everyone, but I know that that um, Tabassi, um, you've particularly highlighted the effect this has had on children in the camp. Um, and so, um, I want you, Tabassi, can you just talk us briefly through what your plans are um, in terms of, you've mentioned that you're going to start um, doing lots of activities with the kids. I know yesterday there was this amazing day where uh, there was clowns and singing and performances and the Freedom Theatre was full of, of, of young people. So could you, and I'm going to ask just very briefly, talk about what, what those plans are to work with the children. Um, and I'm specifically mentioning this because I know that it's something that if uh, people are interested in fundraising um, would need uh, a little bit of money. Yes, uh, one of the things that we already thought about and yesterday was uh, a big celebration from different artists from 48, from Jerusalem, from different cities in West Bank. They all came and we made a big march, artistic uh, march inside uh, uh, the camp where we went all over uh, the neighborhoods uh, and uh, the places where it had uh, destroyed and we celebrate with children. I promise you the old people, the old people, they enjoyed and celebrate with us much more than children. I believe we all need therapy and we all need a treatment uh, after all these uh, 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 times uh, uh, during the invasion. Now we, uh, all the artists, uh, uh, they want to give something for the children in the camp, especially children in Benin. And now we planning for a three months uh, ac artistic activities uh, between workshops, between uh, shows, between uh, uh, different activities, cinema, uh, even some people who had a special or they are uh, specialized uh, in the mental health and psychology uh, for children treatment, they will join us. But the thing is we are in the theater, not a big team to uh, try uh, organize all of this alone. So we're asking for volunteers, even uh, from the West Bank or the artist himself. And now tomorrow, inshallah, we will meet again to have a big plan for uh, three months. The problem is also the Palestinian artist, it's really uh, uh, having not that much support. So yes, we want people to volunteer, but at the same time, we want to be able to pay a basic stuff for the Palestinian artist, for the clowns, for the circus, for the groups, at least we provide them transportation or find them uh, some hospitality. And that's at least what we can provide. We want to buy some tools for the children, colors, uh, small uh, games that they can at least uh, uh, use. Uh, and we give them some uh, uh, presents to, talk, to take home and uh, draw, play, whatever. So yes, I know the money, it's not a, a big thing or it's not the basic thing, but at least, yes, always we need money for sure. And you know, all of you with this conditional fund and all this kind of uh, uh, situation that make our uh, job work a bit difficult, but we, 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 inshallah, tomorrow, we're gonna announce some big highlights of our artistic uh, program. And for sure, uh, uh, you can uh, support it in any way you can. That's the, the program for children. And now we're organizing uh, another workshop, especially for women, mothers, uh, because also we believe uh, 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 the whole members of the family in Janine really need a place, a space to express, to take out, to talk about what happened with them. And for sure, uh, we're talking with some other friends to also have another workshop for nurses for the people who were working uh, in a first aid or with the ambulances. This guy really is a hero and they really faced a very, very crazy, difficult, dangerous situation during at the camp. The Israeli soldiers were shooting at them. The Israeli soldiers, sometimes the jeeps, they were crashing uh, uh, the ambulances. 
sometimes they were arresting them a, 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 an excuse of checking that you will sneak some wanted people. So they really need, uh, uh, for us, we believe that we will try to make this kind of workshop with them. So that's what we can do uh, uh, for now. Uh, there is a lot of things that we think about the future, about documentation, to write about this, and maybe inshallah, some documentation as a documentary and as a, a small play that's gonna come talking about the situation of being stuck in a place that you cannot do anything to help yourself. Uh, I think we will not we will not think bigger than this because it, it, for us it's enough if we will be able to do this emergency artistic three months workshop shows for the children. Uh, many artists already uh, they showed uh, how they ready how much they are ready to come to Janine and to provide some activities and workshops. Um. Thank you so much, Tabassi. Um, I think just to also uh, point out that in 2021, the Freedom Theatre, along with many uh, other Palestinian organizations, uh, lost 80% of its core funding because they refused to um, uh, refuse the political stipulations that that funding would um, come with. Um, and so that has been a really, really uh, devastating blow to the the core um, team at the Freedom Theatre. Um, so um, fundraising is, is really, really important to continue work. However, um, the most important thing is solidarity and action. Um, as far as I understand, um, the general consensus is that this invasions and these invasions are only going to increase. Um, I obviously really hope not, um, but in the case that they do, we need to be uh, ready and planning internationally. Tabassi, I just wonder if you have um, any any final thoughts. Um, uh, yes. No, thank you very much. I mean, uh, uh, what what makes us feel good? Yani, that's what we need. That's what we need that to feel there is uh, people who care about us. And that's that makes all this difficult work it deserves when you see people even in a in a Zoom meeting. There is people loving us, caring us, they care about us and they support us. And for us, that's, for me, that's what we need to feel we are not alone, to feel that there is people watching and following and supporting us. And that's what will give us the strength and the power to continue even harder. I promise you guys, our situation in the Freedom Theater, have, it's a really challenging in many different levels. Uh, uh, yes, we don't share a lot of things daily that we go through. Uh, if you can compare the, 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 the conservative culture, the religious people, the occupation, the Israelis, the politics, the money, the, 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 the European Union, all this, it's all, all the time is there. But what makes it deserve when you see this kind of people attending this kind of meeting to hear, to hear us, to follow us, and really thank you very much uh, 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 for this support, uh, even by attending this kind of meeting, it, it telling us we should continue because there is people looking at us and believing at us. And that's the power that we need, especially after this kind of difficult time. And yes, inshallah, we will be able to, to, to meet your expectation and continue in the same a, 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 a legacy of the Freedom Theater, same legacy of uh, Giuliano Merchamis, and same legacy of freedom in different levels. Yes. I just want to add something. Just uh, I'm happy because I, we meet a lot of people. Already we know how they are love us as a Freedom Theater. In fact, some of them for a long time we don't meet them. So we are lucky for this emergency meeting for to update for them what's happening in the Freedom Theater to meet all of you and uh, thank you. And thank you for Mawagat. Um, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much. So before um, I hand over to um, Jamal to finish with a poem, 
Um, I want to also thank um, everyone who's joined us today, um, all of the groups, all of the individuals, um, many people who have jumped in in the last week and helped in all sorts of ways, including by supporting and organizing this meeting. Um, I'm really grateful. Um, I'd also like to say a huge thank you to the team in um, Janine Camp. Um, I started by saying that uh, Giuliano co-founded the Freedom Theatre with a mission to uh, bring the story of Janine Camp to the world. And I think despite everything faced this week, you have absolutely triumphed in that mission. And I believe that Giuliano would be incredibly proud.